What's your name, please? Victory. 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 That's wow. nice. Uh, how old are you, Victory? I'm nine. OK. Aww. And tell us a bit about you. I live in Latrobe, Pennsylvania. Yeah. And? And what? <laughs> <laughs> and what? Okay. And and tell me what you're going to do today. Are you going to you're going to sing? Yes. Okay. Are you excited? Uh, I'm ex nervous. You're nervous. And excited. Excited and nervous. You said ex nervous. Ex nervous. Ex nervous. Ex nervous. I love that. Well, that's good. And who are you here with today? My mom. Oh. Yeah. Um. And what would you do if you won the million dollars? Buy Simon a rainbow shirt that has glitter on it. Oh, I love that. Wow. Like that. Do you think I need a rainbow shirt? You need some color. Because I only wear, like, normally one color. Yes, white, gray, and black. You got it. <laughs> well, look, let's hope this goes great for you. Thank you. <laughs> That audition was crazy. If you like this one, you might like the next one, and the next one, and the next one, and the next one, and you might even like the Recap Room podcast. Link in description. Oh my gosh. I know. There's a bird just flew in here. She came to visit you. Victory. <laughs> I mean, that is pretty incredible. That is a sign. He flew. There for you. Well, I was not expecting that, and you're angelic, and I loved it. I loved it. I loved it too. You have a beautiful voice. It was incredible. You are incredible. Thank you. I agree. You are a star. I think you have a powerful voice. That was amazing. I really loved it. Thank you. I think, you know, auditioning and turning up sometimes is really, really important for your career. And I think you've been incredibly brave to come here, I have to say. Can I, I just want to talk to Terry for one moment. Terry, let me ask you a question. Yes, yes. Can I have a word, yes, yes. do you mind, sorry. Come to me. Huh? How would you feel if we were to do something different this year? I just... Um, look, victory, uh, as I said, you know, turning up 
you know, in terms of your career, is really important. However, um, we're not going to give you a yes today. We're going to do something else we've never, ever, ever done on the show before. We are all going to give you something special. Five, four, three, two, one. Or more nervous because now we're like only one step away from the live shows. A little more nervous actually, but so excited. What are you singing for us today? I'm going to be singing Girl on Fire by Alicia Keys. Oh. A crowd favorite. Well, Angelica, I wish you good luck today. Thank you. A funny too. Judges have to say, Howie, what did you think? I said, you know, the first time, you remember what I said to you? Yes. What did I say to you? You said I had a good chance of winning America's Got Talent. Well, you know something, Angelica? I'll never forget you. And you know something? I still, I still, tonight, have not changed my mind. You are such a beautiful ray of light. And you have an amazing voice, an amazing stage presence. I just love you. I've got to be honest with you, Angelica. When you told me you were going to sing that song, I thought, oh my God, this is not a great idea. But <laughs> you know what? You nailed it, Angelica. Thank you. I mean, I'm so, I'm so blown away because you walk out and there's this like, you know, you've got these like sneakers on and you look like this adorable little child. And then you open your mouth and it's like, how do those pipes fit in that tiny body? You are <laughs> unbelievable. Thank you. I just feel like... Angelica, you are the chosen one! Here she is, Celine. Celine. Yeah, 
Yes. And I remember your name is Celine and your sister's name is Dion, right? Yeah. Because you guys are all a little bit obsessed with Celine Dion. Yeah. Just a bit. <laughs> so which Celine Dion song are you singing for us today? Well, today I'm not singing a Celine Dion song. I'm singing <laughs> How Am I Supposed to Live Without You. Oh. Wow. I wish you the best of luck. guest judge Laverne what did you think I just want to eat you up and like take you home you are so adorable and so cute and your voice is amazing thank you you are You're so, so talented too. thank you so much I'm really blown away you are so talented unbelievable so adorable I might just have to How are you? I'm great. <laughs> Why are you laughing? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> What's your name? My name's Darcy Lynn. Okay, and Darcy, who's that? My name's Petunia. Oh, it talks. <laughs> Is it a bunny? Yes. Ah. Is that a real bunny? <laughs> oh, we're going to find out. <laughs> okay. And Darcy, why did you both decide to enter the show? Well, it was one of my big dreams. Um, but also, I would really like to keep uh, ventriloquism alive because it's not common, you know? So. <laughs> well, listen, Darcy, best of luck. I really hope you both Thank do well. Thank you so much. All right, good luck. Are you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Hit it. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, you're going to sing? Mm-hmm. Oh, boy. <laughs> so. really sweet 
Your puppet, I'm guessing, is exactly like you. Very charming and adorable. You made my heart melt. You were brilliant. I'm trying to describe how amazing it was. You know what? And if you have Last one. Last one. You, come here, stand up. How you doing? What are you gonna see for us? I don't care, just do it. Are you ready for me? You ready for me? Here we go. You better say, honey. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound wow. that saved a wretch like Madison, how old are you? I'm what? <laughs> Why don't you go and sit up on the face? Do you want to do that? <laughs> People always ask what happens in the commercial breaks. Yeah. Uh, and amazing things happen in the commercial breaks, don't they? You sounded so good. We do ask people in the breaks if they'd like to sing a song. And I was literally just coming back in and I heard this voice thinking, who the hell is that? Yeah. <laughs> we all were. And then I see this little thing in the audience, and it's you. <laughs> How old are you? 11 years old. Amazing. And your name is? Madison Taylor Baez. And where are you from? Yorba Linda, California. Is this the first time you've been at a taping? No, I've been to many tapings, and ever since I was four years old, I would always try and sing for the commercial breaks, and it's always been my dream to be on the show. And I'm finally here. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just kind of freaking out right now. Aw, that's so cute! Oh, okay. yes. Um, well look. Why not have you audition? Yes! Yes! Wow. Why not? Madison, I mean, you don't need a track or anything. Why don't you just do what you just did? Is sure, that okay? Yeah. Do you want some water or anything? I'm okay. You I'm sure? Okay. She's ready. Look at her. She's yeah. ready. Just do it.
Okay, I'm not kidding. In all the years we've ever done this, this has never actually happened before. I mean, I normally leave during the break because people do sing. So, <laughs> so this is actually the opposite. It actually brought me back into the room. This is what you wanted. This is your dream. Yeah. To be on the stage, not oh, just to watch. That's so cute. Yes. You're 11 years old. Do you sing at school? I sing for some of the school events, but. Everybody's going to know your name now, young lady. Your life has just changed. <laughs> what would you do with a million dollars? I don't even know. I mean, I would. <laughs> um. I would help my dad with uh, cancer research. Um, he had stage four colon cancer for the past nine years. So I would help him with that. Oh. We should just vote. What are we doing? We're vote? voting? Well, yeah, I mean, look. I think I know which way this is going to go. We're just going to vote yeah, and gonna vote. get on with it. Yeah. Howie. All right. Remember you. I remember you too. <laughs> so just tell us who you are again, please, and where you're from. Um, man, from Northport, Florida. And just remind us how old you are. Ten. Well, you know what? All the young kids on the show this year are literally killing it. You had a great first audition. We're all rooting for you. Good luck, and I hope the next three minutes changes your life. Thank you. Only 10 years old, and we are seeing acts come out here and they're sweating and they're not performing to par. They're not stepping it up. They're double your age. And then you come out here yeah. and you show them how it's done. That's really nice. Thank you. Thank you so much. The fact that you are, you're just like such a normal person. And to have a voice like this, it's not something you can train to get, it genuinely is a gift. Just the fact that from a child comes an honesty yeah. and a truth. I mean, it's, it's, I, I feel like I'm a witness to something extremely special. At some point in my career, people will say, 
uh, what do you remember most? Uh, I remember hitting the golden buzzer. Hi, my lovely. Hi. Welcome to America's Got Talent. How are you? Um, a little bit nervous. That's okay to be nervous. That's totally understandable. What's your name? Courtney. And how old are you? 13. Oh, 13. Wow. Um, what's your favourite subject in school? Music. What kind of music? I don't know. <laughs> you're very sweet. And I'm guessing you're going to be singing for us? Yeah. Listen, don't be nervous. I know this is a big stage and there's lots of people here, but you're here for a reason, so... Go for it and good luck. Thank you. This shy little thing when you first came out, and then you sing and you're like a lion. I mean, genuinely incredible. Oh my god, you are not from this era, you're from a whole different era. Yes. If you ever watch the documentary, Clive Davis he goes to the Monterey Pop Festival and he sees this young girl that nobody has ever seen before, that nobody knows. It was the first time Janis Joplin got signed. And that would that changed her life. Do you know that story? Yeah. I'm not Clive Davis. I'm Howie Mandel. And I can't sign you to a record deal. The only thing I can do for you, young lady, is give you. <laughs> this suit. I love it. And for tonight, I'll need a cool assistant. Terry! I think you'll work perfect for the... He's wearing the same suit! <laughs> <laughs> Terry, here, I have some cards. And on these cards, I wrote down some cool superhero names, like Blaze, Storm, Falcon, you get the idea. So, Terry, can you please tell me when to stop whenever you want? Stop. You sure? That's it. Great, can you take this name, don't look at it, and put it into your pocket? We'll get back to it in a moment. Okay. Tonight, I brought along my comic. My mum thinks I'm a bit of a comic, but mums always find their sons funny, even when they aren't. Isn't that right, Howie? <laughs> so, 
Here it is, Aiden's comic, and inside is a picture of me as a superhero. Look, here it is. So, I'll leave this here with you, Simon, and we won't colour it in just yet, OK? OK. Great. So, Terry, here, I have a blindfold. Can you please put this up to your eyes and confirm that you cannot see through it? OK. He's very strict. Yes. Can't see it. Great. And can you hold these for me, please? Thank you. So, judges, your task is to colour in my superhero picture. Okay. And I'm not going to look. I'll stand over here and I'll put on my blindfold. So, are you ready? Yes! Yeah. Yeah. Great! So, Simon, please pick up any marker. Can you, with that marker, colour in the cape for me, please? The cape? Okay. Yes. Simon, right. do you like colouring? Yeah, I do. Yeah, I heard that it's very calming for some old people. Uh <laughs> and Simon, whenever you're done, you can just tell me. After that, I'm taking my time, all right? <laughs> Try to stay in the line. Oh, shut up. <laughs> OK, nice. all right. Is that all right? You're done? Yes. OK, great. Can you take that marker and throw it away? Can you now yes. pass the comic and the markers over to Heidi? Yep. Heidi, can you please pick any marker? And with that marker, can you colour in the shirt for me, please? Sure. And, you know, it's OK. You can be a rebel. You can colour outside the lines if you need to. No, no, no. <laughs> And whenever you're done, Heidi, you can take that marker and throw it away like the super diva you are. <laughs> super diva? Pass the comic and the markers over to Howie. Howie, choose any marker, please, and colour in just the shorts. Just the shorts. Got it. Are you done? I am done. Great. You can take that marker and throw it away. All right. <laughs> so, take the last marker. Right. And colour in the legs this time, please. OK. And, Howie, since yeah. that's last one, you know, you can go ahead and give it a big mic drop. Boom. Boom. Great. I'm going to take off my blindfold now. Oh, there we go. Can I have my glasses, please, Terry? Ready. Thank you. So, Howie, yeah. for the first time, please hold up the superhero drawing so I can see it. Wow. Uh, that's very colourful. Pink top, blue legs, green cape and orange shorts. Right. No one could have predicted this. But I knew all along all the choices you all would make tonight. That includes you, Terry. Please take out the name you chose earlier and show everyone what it is. Titan. Yeah. Terry the Titan. That's an awesome superhero name. But just to prove I predicted everything all along, check. This out! Seriously, unbelievable. Heidi. I don't know how you did it. You are incredible. I love the magic, but really, it is you who is the magic. You really are. I think you're such a little star. You sparkled. And I don't know, what's my head saying? What? First of all, I love your shoes so much. Thank you. <laughs> How old are you, Tyler? I'm 11 years old. So it looks like you have the violin. When did you yes. start playing violin? Well, I started playing the violin when I was seven and a half. And what made you get into playing violin? 
Um, I wanted to start playing the violin because I was being bullied in school. Oh. Oh, man. It's because I had cancer. I almost died. You got this. We're rooting for you. By the way, before I start, how are you feeling now? I'm feeling really proud of myself. <laughs> if you don't mind me asking, Tyler, how is your health now? Well, I've been in remission for almost four years. You know what? You are an extraordinary young man. We hear too many stories about people being bullied, but I can tell you one thing. Most people are bullied because they're better than the people who bully them. You know that. And I think you have such an amazing talent, such a personality, and I would like to say something on your behalf to the bullies. We remember you. You guys were absolutely amazing. Hi, thank you. So give us your age range of your group. Uh, the youngest of us is 11 and the oldest is 13. Oh, and tell us where you're from. Uh, we are from Ukraine. Ah. Wow. Thank you guys for coming all the way back. So can you explain a little bit of what you guys uh, do? Um, we are a dance group, but it's not just dancing. It's also lights, programming, uh, coding. Um, there's a lot that goes into this to make a whole good performance. All right. <laughs> we can't wait to see what you guys do. Good luck. Thank you. Oh, I'm so excited.
start with you. Oh my goodness. Well, first of all, this round is all about stepping it up. You did not disappoint. The creativity, the innovation was off the charts. Thank you. So good. Totally agree. You know, I was a fan of Light Balance, the adults. I even like Light Balance kids better than the regular Light too. Balance. Yeah. And it, it's really clear, you know, you always bring up, Simon, like, where do you see this going? I would go pay to see this in Vegas. I would see this at a live concert. I love you guys. I haven't seen people your age so young do something so brilliant, so unique, and the level of rehearsal that must go into yes. that is quite incredible. I think you could be stars. Thank you. Ellen? Okay, you guys, I'm new here. I'm just a guest. I thought this was the definition of a spectacle. It was truly spectacular. It was marvelous. But there are only seven acts that can go forward. And I just wish there were some guarantee to get you guys through to the live show. If only there were one surefire way we could get you there. Oh, wait. There is! There is! Hello, how are you? I'm good, how are you? Oh my gosh, uh, let me just say, I love you and I watch you on Modern Family. I just Oi. adore you. Thank you so much. <laughs> I am so happy that you're here. You look nervous. How old are you? I'm 10 years old. What? 10? Oh my are God, you of course you have to be nervous. And where are you from? I'm from Toronto, Canada. <laughs> Sorry. Wow, she's so nervous though. Oh my gosh. Tell me something, boy Aren't you tired trying to fill that void? Or do you need more? Ain't it hard keeping it so hardcore? I'm falling In all the good times I found myself longing Shut your eyes for a change. In all the bad times, I fear myself. I'm up the deep end. This moment is unbelievable. That wasn't you singing, was it? No. It wasn't someone behind you. <laughs> like Lady Gaga. <laughs> it was me. It really was you. And you know what? You, you are you are so likable, so humble, bearing in mind you've got this. You must have great friends. 
<laughs> yeah. Great parents. But yeah. sometimes I do get bullied, so... Do you? Yeah. Oh. Okay, well, you know, we hear this, unfortunately, a lot. But there's one way you, you win over bullies. It's by being happy and successful. You know that. Yes. Bullies yes. are always threatened about talented people. So in a weird way, it's a compliment. And it shows your strength that you've come all the way from Canada to be here. And we are honored to have you as our guest. <laughs> it was always my dream to be on AGT, you know? Sorry, that's coming true. What did you think, Sophia? It was amazing. It was breathtaking. You're 10 years old. That's impossible to sing like that at 10 years old. And you know what? Let's see who is going to bully you after this. And if you have a Hi, young lady. What is your name? Grace. Grace, you're a beautiful young lady, you know that? Thank you, I guess. <laughs> How old are you? Uh, 12. Are you excited to be here? It's crazy. <laughs> what are you going to sing? I'm singing an original. Really? Yes. What's it about? It's about me. <laughs> and are the people at school behind you supporting you? Most of my friends don't really know I sing. So they don't know you're here? No. You believe that you can win? Well, I mean, miracles can happen, so possibly. <laughs> the stage is yours. Good luck. Original, the people not knowing your name is so right and so wrong because I think the world is gonna know your name. I think right now they're gonna know your name because you are going right now. Hi, Angelina. Hi. So nice to meet you. You won Norway's Got Talent in 2014. Yes. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. So tell us, how old were you when you won? I was seven years old. You were seven years oh, old. Oh, thank you. So you are now 13. I'm 13, yes. You are 13. <laughs> yeah. I've waited 10 years to sing for Simon, and I'm oh. finally... <laughs> So wow. us three have what nothing to do with what's going on no, tonight? No, we don't. <laughs> what, is it, what is it about Simon? He's just amazing, and he's a legend. <laughs> he is. He is a legend. Yeah, he is. 
Well, Angelina, I wish you good luck. Thank you. Thank you so much for being here. Can you just come up to the mic like you're going to be performing? Yeah. Something really special, a star, and as they would say in Norway, Jai Elskadai. Oh, thank you. I love you too. This moment, this time on stage, this song, this performance is going to change your life and your career forever. I believe that. Everything about tonight felt like it came from you. The arrangement of the song, the simplicity of it. I've never heard that song in that version before. Seriously, this was an amazing performance. Hello again. We met a little bit earlier on. Tell us your name and why you're here today, please. My name is Jim Narcisse Williams. Use the mic. <laughs> what? Yeah, we'll start again. Yeah, so tell us your, your name, why you're here, please. My name is Sean Narcissus Williams, and I am eight years old. Eight years old. <laughs> and where are you from? I'm from, I'm from Georgia. Oh, OK. Now, do you think you can win? Yeah, just say yes. Definitely. Definitely. Ah! Okay, I'm guessing you're going to play the drum. Yes. Shall we start the act? Yes. Yes, thank you.
You guys are adorable. I think everybody in this room loved you, and I love you. I loved it too. I love that you do something with your extra time outside of school instead of being on your computers. You're putting this amazing act together. I love that. I haven't seen anything like this before on this stage. You guys might have a very big chance to win this competition because I think everyone is gonna go crazy. I didn't like it. What? No? <laughs> what? I absolutely loved it. Let's go crazy, 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 I mean, seriously, what's not to like? There's so much fun and they're so talented. This is one of my favorite, favorite auditions this year. I really mean that. Okay, I think I know where this is going, and now we have to vote. No, 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 no! There is no need to vote! <laughs> Chioma, you told me backstage that you dreamed about being on AGT and getting a golden buzzer. Now, Chioma and the Atlanta Drum Academy, I am honored to make that dream come true. Hello. Hello. <laughs> and what's your name? My name is Sarah. Where are you from, Sarah? I'm from Poland. Are you? Yeah. <laughs> My family, or, well, you know, part of them going back in time were from Poland. Me too. I'm Polish. So we could be related. Oh, that's true. <laughs> so what made you decide to come on America's Got Talent? You know, um, when I was like a little, I was, you know, always watching the videos on YouTube of the show and I was so, you know, amazed by that. And, um, you know, and they said that in America, you know, everything, you know, is coming true. The dreams are coming true. So I check if that's true. <laughs> I love that. Thank you. And how old are you, Sarah? Um, I'm 13. 13? Oh my God. What? 13. Oh. Yeah. Oh wow. Okay. I'm guessing you're a singer, yeah? Yeah. yeah Tell me yeah. <laughs> the song you're going to sing and why you chose this song, please. I'm going to sing a Billie Eilish song, Lovely. Okay. I feel it's really emotional, really, the lyrics are really meaningful. I hope you're going to like it, like everyone's going to like it. Okay, well, listen, <laughs> I've got a good feeling about you for some reason. All right, Sarah. Thank you. Good luck. Thank you so much. Thank you. Here we go. She's nervous. Yeah. 13. 13 years old. Oh, yeah. She's a baby. Thought I'd fallen away. Thought I'd fallen away out. But 
but you never go away So I guess I gotta stay now singers over the years but wow there are those moments where yes. I mean this wasn't perfect however you have a real star glow about you so much wow thank you I appreciate so, it is this your first time to America yeah that's true it must be such an unbelievable feeling doing this in front of an American audience because yeah. I'm guessing this is probably where you dreamt of performing. Mm -hmm. And yeah. I can remember when I came to America for the first time, and that was 20 odd years ago. And that was a moment I'll never forget. And I want to make this a moment for you to remember forever. Oh! What's your name? Laura. Laura, how old are you, Laura? I'm 13. 13, are you a singer? Yes. Yes, and have you been doing this for a long time? Well, my mom always liked to sing, and you know, she saw that I liked it too, so she helped me practice and pick out the songs, and here I am. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. Are you nervous? I'm nervous. <laughs> are you nervous? I don't know, I just see so many talented people, and you know, just. <laughs> She's gonna do great. I feel it. All you gotta do is sing the song that you picked out, okay? Thank you. All right.
How do you feel now? Relieved. <laughs> you are born with such a gift. It is unbelievable. I could not stop smiling. Like, you put me in the best mood. Wow. Loved it. Thank you. That didn't just happen. <laughs> Honest to God, you came out like a jelly. I didn't think you were going to be able to talk. <laughs> and then I'm thinking to myself, oh, my God, if she starts to sing, this is not going to work. And then that just happened. I have never heard anything like that in all the years I've been doing this show. <laughs> Seriously. And what made it even better is the fact that you are such a sweet person, so humble, not even aware of how amazing you are. Thank you so much for coming on this show. Uh, that was really, really, really special. Amazing. You literally made all my hairs stand up on, on end. And you're only 13 years old. And you know what? I think that this show is going to completely change your life. And I'm going to change your life right now. Director Anthony White. Anthony White, nice to meet you. Tell me how this uh, choir came up. What was the idea behind it, please? Well, I've been the director of this wonderful youth group for um, a little over 21 years. Oh, wow. And uh, we're here to let the world know that we have some wonderful young people in the city of Detroit. And yes. <laughs> they all have great grades, and they're all talented. All right, well, good luck. Let's do it. The little one who's yeah, hiding yeah, in the yeah. back. Can she step forward? Yeah. Is... See her. <laughs> How do you feel? Good. Good. <laughs> you feel like you did a great job? Thank you. Yes. <laughs> I, yes. Let me thank you because what we all just witnessed here tonight was nothing short of absolute brilliance. <laughs> This was not expected. If oh, you know what? Wait, wait, I wait, 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 wait. I'm so sorry 
to interrupt you, Holly, but I have to tell you, Aww. every young man and woman on the stage represents me and where I came from. I remember sitting out my window in Flint, Michigan, dreaming and wanting to make it and wanting to be here. And they're here. And they did so well that I have to do this. All it takes is one person to believe in a young man or woman for them to reach their dreams, and you are that man, sir! In the audience, why you decided to audition this year on America's Got Talent? It's one of my dreams to perform in front of millions of people. All right, well, good luck. Thank you. Let's see what she can do. She goes, go baby, go baby. She got this. Wow, look at her. She's only holding it with her head. Look at her. This is insane. Look this at is... this. Before I go to the judge, can I ask you a question? If I remember rightly, did your dad make those props? Yes, my dad makes all my props. I'm also self-taught, so my God. everything's oh from my the heart. God. You're like something out of Game of Thrones, aren't you? Exactly. <laughs> Howie, what did you think? You are going places, young lady. You can go wherever you want. I, I'd imagine you can fold yourself up, put yourself in an envelope, and mail yourself <laughs> wherever you want to go. Act. Mel. Let me tell you, your last performance was incredible. This performance topped it. I don't know how you, you do it. I have no idea. Thank you so much. I think actions speak louder than words. Hello. Hello. Hi, what is your name? Ariel Brill. Hi, Ariel. Nice to meet you and welcome to America's Got Talent. Thank you. Oh. How old are you, Ariel? I'm 11 years old. You're 11 oh. years old? Oh. Yes. My daughter, my oldest daughter is 11 years old, too. <laughs> wow, she would be very nervous to be on the stage right now. Are you not nervous? <laughs> oh, um, yes. <laughs> Will you be singing for us? Because I see a mic stand. Yes, I am. <laughs> How many years have you been singing? Um, 
for as long as I can remember, to tell you the truth. Yeah? My brother taught me um, and trained me and, you know, helped me a lot, so he's a big supporter. Okay. I can't wait to see it. Good luck to you. Thank you. Playback that can't be really coming out of her mouth. You sound so grown up in your voice. I mean, it was really mature. unbelievable, mature, and moving. It was. Thank you. Mel, you're 11 years old. I was not expecting anything like that to just happen. <laughs> this huge voice comes out of nowhere. Like, how is that possible? I don't know. You're just born with it. <laughs> Well, that was a very special, beautiful audition. Well done. Thank you. That was a very special moment, and I, I see how moved you are by it, and we are moved by it. To see an 11-year-old have such a mature voice, it's, it's freaky, you know, it's, and freaky in the best way. <laughs> you were nervous, and we can see you're nervous, but uh, the overall effect is quite astounding, and we're looking for something amazing. That was pretty amazing. Thank that you. That was an amazing moment. <laughs> Howie. Uh, you, wow. You obviously have an amazing talent. Yeah. You're adorable. I, I, I want to see a lot more of you. Thank you. <laughs> I love this act. I really, really love this a lot. Thank you. And because I love you so much that I'm going to send you right to Radio City Music. You're excited, huh? Hi. I mean, I'm. I'm. Uh, you want to say something to Louie? Hi. <laughs> hi. Are you are you are you nervous? Um. Yeah. Actually, I I am. Yeah, how old are you again? I'm 14. 14. Uh, oh, that's why. So you're just a baby. Who who okay. are you here with? I'm here with my beautiful mother. Your beautiful mother. Bless you. Uh, hi, mom. <laughs> Go ahead, young lady. Thank you. Your 
Beautiful. I mean, I don't, I don't even know how anyone can do that, sing and then smile at the same time. Thank you Thank so you. much. Thank you. I think you're just a natural. You are meant to sing. Thank you so much. Simon, uh... You, young lady, have just turned this competition upside down. Louis? It's not just one thing with you. It's not just the voice. It's not just the performance. You have everything. And it's so Thank infectious you. to watch your performance. <laughs> so, oh my gosh. Uh, my name is Luke Islam. Tell us your dream. My dream is to become a star and make it to Broadway. <laughs> okay, it's a trick question. Who's your favorite judge? <laughs> <laughs> I love all the judges. Smart. <laughs> You're gonna make it, kid. That's smart. But if I had to pick one, I would pick Julianne because I've been... <laughs> Oh, come on! <laughs> Somebody jealous? It was an accident. Hater! We didn't mean it. <laughs> Tell us why you love her. Because um, me and my sister have been following you and your brothers dancing for a very long time. Oh, oh. That's amazing. Oh. So tell us what you're gonna do here tonight. So I'm gonna be singing She Used To Be Mine from the Broadway musical Waitress. Oh! Go ahead. She's gone, but she used to be mine. 
I just have to say I'm extremely flattered that you would even look up to my brother and I with a voice like that, with an energy like that, Thank because you. oh honey, you have such talent and grace. You have something so special. You have an essence inside of you that has given you a gift. <laughs> Yes. And yes. I believe that not only are you going to become a star and get your dream to come true, but I don't think you need to wait that much longer because... And when you're broken on the ground... Finding her mark. You find your mark? Hello. Yeah. <laughs> Are you going to be doing an original again for this round? Yes, of course, yeah. Best of luck. Thank you so much. Okay, so. It's an emotion, just how you respond to it. That's true. Don't talk to me. I need to be by myself. I keep myself company. And I don't need nobody else Everything makes me so angry Sometimes I can't even breathe And I don't have nobody else That can keep me company I hear them talking about how my back If they are trying to be quiet Try a bit harder than that They probably do it on purpose Talk as loud as they can So my ears can hear them Even if I cover them with my hands Oh man, some shocking news You're calling people wimpy, dumb And a loser too Leave them alone You have no idea what they could be going through Maybe different to you But they are humans too Might not have found their safe place yet Maybe searching around on the internet No luck though All they see is perfect images Of perfect people Perfectly posing in front of their perfect house With their perfect Perfect family, what's that about? Nothing more than a picture on their phone. Someone else's beauty doesn't take away from your own. Most of the time I'm away from reality. Being able to write songs might be my only safety. And I know it really saved me. And I know it really saved me. When the world was crumbling around me. Everybody's falling, but I am flying Makes me feel like I'm superhuman I might just be that Cause misfits have some powers that are really pretty rad <laughs> Sophie, um, correct me if I'm wrong uh, When we first met you, you sang a song about bullying which which you'd written when you were 13, is that right? Um, yeah, ish. 14, maybe? Yeah, 13, yeah. 14, yeah. So this is what I want to say to you, because this is a two-part audition. I think the song should have ended with, I don't think about you anymore. I say this as a father. Bullying is always going to happen, but if you don't care or even think about them, means you win. You continue talking about them, they win. You're so young, and I think people will listen to you so cleverly. There has to be a more positive slant where we go forward from this point on. And I don't want you talking about these people ever again, because they're not worth talking about. But I love your voice. That's real. Very, very people. What was the last line that ended with pretty rad? Misfits have some powers that are really pretty rad. I loved it. And I think... I'd know you from that one song. That's incredible. To stand up there with just a guitar, I mean, that takes incredible cojones. <laughs> I don't think there's maybe a more important issue now that social media is this thing that's pervasive everywhere we look. Young people not understanding that that isn't that big a deal when you look back on your life. And you have schooled so many people in this moment. And, and, and I think I'm doing it. How are you, Foge? I'm feeling good, I'm feeling good. Fantastic. So let's remind everyone around tonight who you haven't met who you are. I'm Flage from Savannah, Georgia. I'm 14 years old and I'm a rapper. 
I did a song about um, gun violence. Uh, it's called Guns Down. Let's pick up on that because I think it's important that you tell everyone what you told us on the first day we met, if you don't mind. Um, my dad, his name was Camouflage. He was a rapper, up and coming. Uh, he was gonna be signed to Universal Records. But two days before he was gonna sign the contract, he got murdered and um, my mom was pregnant with me, yeah. My whole goal is to uh, continue my father's legacy. I feel like he died too early. That's what I feel, and I feel like he had a dream and he had things he wanted to do, so I'm gonna do it for him. 100%. And, Foshe, what is the song you're gonna do today? You wrote it? Yes, it's an original. It's called I Can't Lose. And tell me what it's about. It's just about my life, like what I've been through to get here and to be in this position on America's Got Talent. All right, well, good luck, Pleasure. Thank you. Look, I gotta make it look what I done been through. This is real life, I cannot pretend to. Never let them tell you what you can't do Cause I done made it this far, I can't lose My struggle, that's something I really went through Most of them was face to face, some of them was mental Just to get my feelings out, I wouldn't push the pencil Needed help to eat this beat, so I use my utensils I'm from Savannah, it's a crab in the bucket effect In the face they love you, they'll stab you right back in the back Just to prove them wrong, I get a million and go double plaque But the haters and the doubters gonna be family after that But I'm just trying to get this green like a herbivore you say you want it bad, but I want it more And I'ma get it, I don't gotta stand by a corner store Cause I'm the greatest, work ethic won't be deflated They said that I never make it, say that I never prosper That second place trophy gon' transform to Oscar Now they feel it in they heart, I'm the people's dot Dan They want me to flatline, but they can never stop up I gotta make it, look what I done been through This is real life, I cannot pretend to Never let them tell you what you can't do Cause I done made it this far, I can't lose I gotta make it, look what I done been through This is real life, I cannot pretend to Never let them tell you what you can't do Cause I done made it this far, I can't lose Mel, what do you think? Oh. Gosh, I just think that the way that you write, it comes from the heart. And I like you and I love you. And oh, I love you too. You're brilliant. You're brilliant. Thank you. Ah, uh, wow. You are a wow. And it's not somebody who wrote a song. It's not somebody who sings a song. It's somebody who lives a song and teaches us a lesson. And you're a star. What a wonderful yes. moment. Well, look, you know what, Flaugier, here's the good news. We provide a platform, you do the hard work. I'm not an expert, but I think you, the lyrics, the tracks, everything feels real. And I don't say that a lot Thank of you. the time. I appreciate I, you. No, I really like you. And I'm, I'm thrilled that you've come on this show. Thank you. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm blown away, and I was blown away by your audition. I mean, I, I have goosebumps, and I'm shaking a little bit, because I want to tell you something. At 14 years old, you have the kind of authenticity and honesty that uh, some artists never achieve yeah. in their entire lives. You were not given a chance to have a relationship with your father. You were not given a chance then, and I want to make sure you get a chance now. It's been a long day. Without you, my friend. What is your name? Angelina Green. Hi, Mom. Hi. She must be so proud. <laughs> Are you and your mom close? Very close. Like, my best friend. Oh, really? That's so nice to hear. And what will you be doing for us today? Well, I've been singing since forever, but I took it seriously when my parents got divorced. And it was really hard for me. And music helped me so much. See your act. Good luck. Thank you. Come on and come. 
talked about how you know you've had a lot of pain in your life and you used music to make you feel better and you know if you move somebody emotionally i think that's the best thing music can do and i think that's what you just did very overwhelming for you right but when you watch this back you're gonna know how much of an amazing job that you just did considering all the nerves and everything else you were really, really good. So just take in this moment. That was great. How old are you, 13 years old? I think you've got a great voice. This is one of my favorite auditions of today. I do. Thank you so much. I mean, you've made my goosebumps have goosebumps. <laughs> oh my God. The truth is, you know, we don't get many people like you for a reason, because they're hard to find. And genuinely, I'm excited, because I think you are a, a really, really, really talented person. Thank, Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. I really, really loved what you just did. To me, you feel like there is an old soul inside of that little 13-year-old body, and I really, really loved it. And I loved it so much that I'm going to hit the gold. Welcome. Thank you. What's your name? My name's Amanda Mena. And how old are you, Amanda? I'm 15 years old. 15 years old? <laughs> yeah. Where are you from? I'm from Boston, Massachusetts. What do you do? Do you sing? I sing. I love singing. You love music? Mm hmm Is it something you do as a hobby? Does it make you feel good? I feel like my experiences really connect me to, like, music. I just, I, I love it. What is your experience that, uh... I was raised in Dominican Republic till I was four years old. So when I came here, I didn't know a word of English. Really? And I got bullied a lot. So um, oh. all that kind of gave me tough skin. I just want to ask a question. And I, I do hear this a lot, unfortunately. You got bullied. What got you through that whole period? I think it was really music and my mom. I didn't look like everybody else. You know, I didn't speak the language. I got made fun of a lot. People would just be like, oh no, get out of here. Like, we don't want you here. That really hurt. And my mom always told me, we all have a purpose on this earth. So just try and fulfill it. Are you nervous? A little bit. A little bit? Yeah. You ready to wow us? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Go ahead, young lady. Okay, thank you. Best of luck. Yeah, man. 
terrifying. mother wants me to lose weight, but she doesn't know how to tell me. She's in New York, she comes to LA. You know how you see your parents, you become a child again? I'm like, oh my God, mommy! She's like, Jacqueline, Lord of mercy, you're fat. <laughs> Jesus, you are fat. What are you eating, people? <laughs> I don't like weight loss TV shows. If you love that show, The Biggest Loser, you and I can't be friends. <laughs> You know how that show works? If somebody's overweight, you lock them on an island, and they have to work out eight hours a day, seven days a week, and oh yeah, we're gonna make you wear a small spandex bra, and baby panties, and wear you on a scale, and for cattle, on national TV. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't you lose weight? Who's losing these contests? <laughs> you want to impress me, get a bunch of fatties and lock them in a donut shop. <laughs> <laughs> the first one to not go into a diabetic coma wins. That's the show <laughs> I would support. How did I get into this? How do I make noises? I don't know. I grew up making noises. I can't stop it, man. <laughs> when I was growing up, I lived next to an active runway. My father was in the Air Force. So that meant every few seconds. <laughs> that was me. My mom wasn't prepared for that. Why is the six month old baby making noises? <laughs> now, later on in life, I learned that these sounds can get you in trouble. I'll give you an example. On an aircraft, this is what I did. Not allowed to do this. <laughs> Don't do that on a plane, man. If you go, they're gonna think it's real. I did that. This is Barbara Walters, and today on my show, I have award-winning actress, Natalie Portman. Natalie, I hear you're having a baby. I am Barbara. <laughs> We're thinking of naming the baby Oscar, but that's, that, that's silly because that's my cat's name, so. Hey y'all, it's Miley Cyrus, what's up? Okay, that's good. What, Dad? No, I'm not gonna clean my room right now. Want me to clean out your bank account? <laughs> <laughs> you do jokes, I do impressions, I got it. I could do jokes, I'm sure you could. Could you do an impression? <laughs> yes, yes, I could do an impression. Go ahead, do it. <laughs> what? Do it. Impression. Yeah, and then you tell me who I'm doing. Okay, all right, let me think. King Kardashian. What? <laughs> you are tweeting without thinking. Donald Trump. <laughs> no. It's cheap, it's cheap. Animals, it's a crapshoot. Crapshoot, <clears throat> come on! <laughs> All right, now listen, I have an impression. Okay, I am not a professional. That's fine. All right, t tell me who this is. Ready? Yeah, who's this? <clears throat> I did not have sexual relations with that woman. Elton John. <laughs> in what world do you live in, Rebecca? Where some 17-year-old dude is showing up to this house party like, <laughs> y'all not gonna believe this. I got Pinot Grigio! <laughs> yeah, got that Grigio! <laughs> Let's do shots of Chardonnay. Let's start a book club! <laughs> yeah. It's never happened, right? You don't know a 17-year-old that owns a corkscrew. 
that's weird. All right. Not one time in your entire life can you tell me a time where you've seen a 17-year-old dude be like, mm, 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 mm. this Merlot pairs so well with the Doritos Locos taco. Mm. <laughs> oh, that's good. It's just something about Zinfandels in a Hot Pocket that is to die for. <laughs> I worked at this grocery store for a lot of hateful years. Why is it when you hate your job, they won't fire you? <laughs> and now look, I worked in the worst department at the grocery store, not the meat, not produce, not the freezer. I worked in the steel department. You familiar with the steel department, right? Self-checkout lane? I got paid to watch people steal all day. And people think you stupid. Like, you know when they're going to rob you when they're bringing up their stuff, they always got to look back up at you. They're like, boop, boop. <laughs> this one dude tried to humiliate me. Like, I knew he was going to rob us because I'm looking at him. He's looking at me. I'm like, just steal it. <laughs> but he, try, he tries to play me in front of the entire store while he's ringing his stuff up. He makes the beat noise with his mouth. <laughs> He didn't even do it right. Like, you gotta act this out, go all in, raise your pitch at least. He's like, Bleh. I like the produce is not even supposed to make a sound. You're beeping unbeepable stuff. When I got invited to come in America's Got Talent Champions, it was like all my dreams came true at once. I thought he was gonna be a singer. So I decided to do some research on the judges. Did you know that backstage there are five hairdressers, three makeup artists, a wardrobe department, and a whole team of nutritionists? <laughs> and that's just to maintain Simon's new look. Oh. 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 Heidi, uh -oh. my mum told me that you're a Victorian. Secret supermodel. <laughs> and she showed me one of your videos. But then Dad came home from work and we watched all your videos. <laughs> over and over again. I got a motorcycle. I don't like telling people I have a motorcycle because every time I tell someone, they always got to tell me a story about how their friends crashed on a motorcycle. You know, like, why do people have to be so negative? I don't go up to pregnant women telling them my dad left. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so annoying. So annoying. I walked at my apartment one time, right? I walked at my apartment, and my neighbor walked up to me. She was like, oh my God, you got a motorcycle? Are you stars? Are you stars? You better be careful. I got in a car wreck the other day. My car flipped eight times. I'm looking to be alive. Blessed, right? Yeah. She black, by the way. <laughs> Everyone around us was like, you know, that was, that is crazy that your car flipped eight times, you're alive, you are blessed, you know? And I'm, I'm over here thinking, who the heck counted, right? Like, <laughs> who's that calm when their car's flipping in the air? Ah! One! Like, who's doing that? <laughs> My name is Preacher, thank you so much, I appreciate it. That's, That's it. it. That's I'm kind of clueless, you know, but it seems to me kids today are a little bit entitled. Am I right, right? Okay, so my daughter turns 16 and she says, Mom, I wanna go to Coachella and I want you to get me a hotel room. Oh. Yeah, I know, I'm like, you're 16, listen to yourself, a hotel room. <laughs> I mean, if you can't find a guy who can afford a van by now, I mean, really. <laughs> When I grew up, my mom and her friends, they partied 24-7. You know, they always, always brought flasks on field trips. Okay? <laughs> right? So, I go on my daughter's first field trip. I take my flask. Right, Howie? Right. I'm not gonna get on a bus full of first graders sober. Not, not whatever. Okay? <laughs> I take out my flask, you know, I have a little sip. And all the other field trip moms, they just go ballistic. They're like, she's got a flask, she's got a flask! <laughs> like I'm some kind of terrorist, right? <laughs> I'm like, calm down, Biatch. 
I'm not driving this bus. I can teach you how to do Ryan Reynolds, but first you have to do Jim Carrey's voice. And in order to do Jim Carrey, just imagine yourself as a giant Canadian bird, okay? <laughs> Hi there, judges. Uh, I have some voices for you. <laughs> Take that Canadian bird down to a sexy whisper and you have Ryan Reynolds. Hi there. <laughs> I have some voices for you, judges. <laughs> I hope you enjoy them. <laughs> that did sound like Ryan Reynolds. Oh my God. Okay, here's how to do Seth Rogen's voice. Yeah, take Santa Claus's laugh. Ho, ho, ho. Now imagine Santa Claus eats a different kind of cookie. <laughs> 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 this is a crazy job. I just lay down chimneys and I deliver packages to kids and eat their cookies. <laughs> now you can do that. I have a twin sister. And I actually don't talk a lot about being a twin because people ask really stupid twin questions. Like whenever I say I have an identical twin without fail, someone will go, do you guys look alike? <laughs> We are very different personality-wise, me and my sister. I'm very silly and playful. My sister's very dark and sarcastic. And she has low self-esteem, which is weird, because she has my face. <laughs> yeah. Do you know what it's like when someone that looks exactly like you calls you up and goes, I feel so ugly. <laughs> That's good. That is our face. You know, I'm not from California, but I look like I am. Just another wobbly guy on the sidewalk. <laughs> I made eight bucks walking over here. <laughs> Thank you. Hey, can you guys see this bracelet? Yeah. yeah. Good. Just uh, making sure. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody always thinks that this is one of those copper magnetic healing bracelets. I'm like, hey, does that thing work? I'm like, oh yeah, man. I was in a wheelchair last week. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I'm gonna put it on this arm next week. <laughs> I better take it off soon though, you know? I don't want to get too better. <laughs> Might mess up my show and then I have to figure out how to be a magic singing ventriloquist or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just say we're not getting a puppet on that thing. Oh my God! I just got the citizenship. Yeah! <laughs> Until I got my citizenship, I never had a road rage. If somebody cut me off, I'd be like, oh, so sorry. I was driving too slow. <laughs> but the day I got the citizenship, somebody cut me off. I'm like, what the heck? You can't cut me off. This is my land. <laughs> That's when I realized I become true American. <laughs> because I felt entitled. <laughs> oh! Before the citizenship, somebody hold the door for me, I ran really fast, I'm like, thank you so much. After the citizenship, I'm like, uh, you hold the door, you peasant. <laughs> <laughs> I got sassy. <laughs> I love her. It was very hard on me growing up, he used to call me a huge waste. <laughs> you see, both of my parents wanted me to become a lawyer. Never even came close to becoming a lawyer, but I was once involved in a suit. <laughs> but I've since traveled the world, went to Spain, fell madly in love with a Spanish sundress. <laughs> and we broke up and I was pantalones. Yeah! I love him. But I'm happily married now. Oh. <laughs> My wife and I are Polly. It's polyester. 
our daughter Capri. Brought home a pair of sweatpants. Hey, I want to be a supportive father, but I want to see her date someone ironed with a crease. This guy looked like he'd been donated. She asked if he could spend the night. I said, in my house, you'll sleep in separate drawers. You know the problem when you go to a nursing home and you look like me? Yeah, they wouldn't let me out. The only reason I'm here tonight is I had to get a night pass from the front desk. The first thing I found out when I got old is that young people hate old people. Oh, is that right? No. 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 Really? Did you ever drive behind an old person? <laughs> yes. Does this look familiar? Yes. <laughs> yeah. The worst thing I'm experiencing now at 80 is that my hearing has gotten awful. I'm talking to this woman the other day, and she tells me she has a peanut allergy. Right, I misheard the word. I said, what happens? She said, I start choking and gagging. I applied to work at the Coco Foundation when I was in college, uh, and they rejected me because I have hearing loss. But they Yes, boo, the Cocoa Foundation. Uh, they, told, they told me I was a liability issue because if the gorilla were to sneak up on me, I would not be able to hear it, which I can't say with any degree of certainty, uh, <laughs> but probably that seems true. Um, so you guys seem like a nice crowd full of hearing people, so I'm just going <laughs> to toss this question out to the room. Um, what are y'all going to do different if a gorilla sneaks up on you. Uh, <laughs> it's true. Yeah, thank you. I would love to know. Uh, <laughs> that makes a lot of sense. DM me after the show. I'm just desperate to know what home field advantage y'all have uh, <laughs> with your two-second head start. Ridiculous. Nothing. Nothing. The only thing you're going to do different than me is die scared. That's it. Um. Yo, this is a true story. When I was 10 years old, my parents sent me to Tourette's camp. Yeah, that's where the joke should end. <laughs> it's a real place, and I didn't realize it till this moment, but I found out that when other people twitch, it makes me twitch more. So on the first day, they put us in a circle with a hundred kids. The kid next to me did a shoulder roll, and my Tourette saw that and took that as a challenge. And I threw him a head flop. The girl next to him did a full body twitch, and everybody saw that, and all hell broke loose. <laughs> Some of my charts, I can't explain why they're true. I just know from experience, this is what's gonna happen. Here's the locker room at my gym. I am the blue dot, I walk in. I start to get changed. The minute I get all my clothes off, 12 guys walk in, and this is where their lockers are. <laughs> that is so true. <laughs> it defies statistics. Sometimes statistics sound scary, but it's not when you look at it from a different angle. When I first got married, I heard 44% of marriages end in divorce. That's a scary number. Think about that. 40, my wife and I are like, do we stand a chance? Think of the other side. If 44% of marriages end in divorce, you know what that means? 56% of marriages end in death. <laughs> Till death do us part. <laughs> Those are the two ways that marriages end, folks. If, if you're married, enjoy it now. It does not end well. <laughs> Give it up for my dad. Gerald Kelly, the comedian. I love that dude, but he's a loser. <laughs> Why? Oh my God. I'm seven years old, and we have the same job. <laughs> the other day, he was like, hey, yo, Hunter, are you going to work tonight? If you going, I'm going. We have the same job. <laughs> oh, 
my roommate's actually white, and he's like, uh, this is racist. Not all white people are serial killers. I'm like, well. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like all serial killers are white here, buddy. We're on season 14. Come on. You know what I'm saying? It's a clean sweep. Let's go. And I feel bad because white people are actually the only people in the world that can be serial killers. There's no other ethnicity in the world that can get away with eight unsolved murders in a row. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, you don't think black people want to be serial killers? Of course they do. They cannot. Could you imagine a black serial killer? He would get pulled over on the way to getting supplies. <laughs> <laughs> he hasn't even done anything yet. Come on. Indians, Asians, Hispanics, we can't be serial killers. Our family's way too nosy. <laughs> My mom's an old Indian lady. She's a snitch. My mom would just show up. Where is the rope? What happened to the duct tape? Where is the bleach? I'm calling the cops. I'm like, come on, mom. You raised me. Don't do this. I'm your son. Come on. I'm 34. I don't look 34. I, I don't look any age. I just look like I've been through stuff. <laughs> and 34 is a difficult age because it's not old, but it's old enough that the world's changed. Like, I, I'm old enough to remember time was you saw a fella with a neck tattoo. Well, then you thought, oh, I'm about to see a dead body. Now you see a fella with a neck tattoo. All you think is, oh, this latte is going to be amazing. <laughs> and, and, and you got to do things to stay young. I, I do things to stay young. I, I recently borrowed money from my parents. <laughs> For those of you who never borrowed money from your parents, the crew will know this, the celebrities will not. <laughs> you have to gather your parents together and go, hello, mother, father, you know how you're supposed to teach me responsibility? Well, you failed, and that comes with a hefty fine. <laughs> I just got broken up with, it was an open relationship, it means you can be with anybody you want. I didn't know this, apparently, the girl can also do that. <laughs> you know, read the fine print. And my girl got the first person. I made the mistake of asking her this guy's name. She told me, you ever hear somebody's name and then know immediately that this person is a better lover than you? I was like, what's his name? She's like, Alejandro. I'm like, no! No! Alejandro! You, you, you couldn't be with uh, Eugene, you know? Or, or a Simon? You couldn't do a Simon. You couldn't do a Simon. You couldn't do a Simon. <laughs> listen, listen, if you're not laughing right now, if you're not laughing right now, your name is Eugene, all right? Every Eugene here is like, actually, I've heard they're pretty vigorous, okay? Yeah. So I, I met this guy, and it was a relief because his name was Alejandro, but his voice was Eugene. <laughs> Straight up, he comes over, he's like, hey man, how's it going? I'm like, much better now. <laughs> as soon as my son touched my finger, I knew I would die for him. I don't even know this dude, but I would die for my son. The first time I see him, the first time I touch him, I would die for my son. Isn't that crazy we do that, fellas? Yeah. That's right. Because we wouldn't do that for our wives. What? Oh, I'm feeling the heat from the women. Hey, hang on, hang on. Let me explain. Ladies, hang on. Hang on. Look, ladies, the first time we see you or touch you is usually on the first date. No dude in this world is dying for you on the first date. Now, let me make you feel better about the situation. If you're on a first date and a dude looks at you and goes, I would die for you, you better run. Because that dude's about to kill you. But I would die for my wife now, 100%. It took a couple years, but we got there. That's right. If a car jumped the curb and was headed her way, I would push out of the way and take the hit myself. That's how much I love her. Because we've all dated people we wouldn't die for, right? That same car jumps the curb, you're like, shh, I guess it was their time, I guess it was their time. The Lord works in mysterious ways. I'm the type of guy, ladies, that will offer you my jacket. If it's cold outside, I will offer you my jacket. Uh, but I'm not the type of guy that uh, once you turn that down, then uh, you get cold later. <laughs> Offers off the table. You. Uh... You obviously make bad decisions, and uh, we shouldn't both suffer for that. I just found out that I might need glasses uh, for reading. So I had to make the hard decision, you know, to stop reading. Uh, I got colors and shapes down, I'm pretty good. I got silhouettes made out. I knew I was getting older, by the way, when I started rooting against the kids in scary movies. 
Now you watch Friday the 13th, Halloween, teenagers do something stupid or rebellious, but you still want them to make it. You want them to live. You're like, run in the barn, he's coming, run in the barn. <laughs> now I'm like, your mom and dad told you not to leave the house. 